hi everyone welcome back to my channel long time no see so i have not made new plant videos in quite a long time but i noticed well actually a couple weeks ago i noticed issues with my monstera here um this guy's name is samson and so i figured why not pop on here and show you what i'm gonna do so the issue with um this guy is thrips now i know for a fact that it is thrips because this is my third monstera and each time i've, I've had an issue with thrips so what i'm gonna do is go through because i decided like it was still growing so i treated it with neem oil and i didn't see any um you know active bugs or anything so i just let it be um and now i think um that there aren't any like active bugs right now i haven't seen evidence of that but the leaves that were like severely affected by it they are starting to look a little worse for wear and kind of shriveled up and stuff so i'm going to remove those now um i'm just showing you what i do of course with anything there's a million other ways that you can do it but what i'm going to do is just remove the most badly affected leaves and then leave the others because as you can see i don't know if you can see that in here but right here is a new leaf there's another one down here so it is still actively growing um i don't have shears i don't know why i keep saying um <laughs> i don't have shears so i just am gonna break the leaf that i want to remove off down closest to the base in here if you can see that so yeah that's what i'm gonna do um Maybe I'll put it right here and I'll move a little bit this way so you can see like the plant exactly what I'm doing. And so if you have a monstera and you're looking for signs of, um, of thrips, first of all, you want to look at the back of the leaves because that's where they really hang out. And then for example, this is a newer leaf and you can see this browning right here. I'll zoom in, zoom in on that for you. This is a result of that. Now, if they were active, you would see like the bugs, Sometimes you can see like webbing it, all sorts of things, but you'll notice it because you'll start to get that discoloration like this on your leaves that don't really come from much else. Like you can of course have um, this brown and tip right here that's like a watering issue, but all of this like sandy browning like this, all of that on the back of your leaves, that's for sure um, from the thrips. So let's go ahead and just get started. I'm gonna start around the bottom and I'm just gonna check the backs of the leaves and you know, if the back is looking really bad, I'm just gonna pop it off uh, super close to the base because I loved how full this Monstera got. It's the fullest one that I have had, but um, not but, but so that's why I was trying to leave the leaves on there. But, you know, once they get too far gone from that, they're just going to keep shriveling up and shriveling up. So I am just going to go ahead and take them off and leave, you know, the healthiest ones. And then, you know, of course, continue to watch the new growth. So that's just what I'm doing now. But well, how have you all been doing with your plants this season? I know we're hitting the end of summer here, you know, so the weather's going to start changing and all that. But how did, how's everyone's plants made it so far? I mean, for me, mine have done well. Um, I had a few casualties, but, you know, I had some serious life issues that occurred. And I, the last thing on my mind was the plants for a period of time. So... I wasn't doing all my usual care. And so a couple suffered. Oh, here's a brand new leaf right here. Okay. So that's this is a good sign too that the brand new leaves that are coming in, they don't have that browning and stuff on the back. So that leads me to believe again that there aren't any more of the um the active the active bugs on here. Let's see. Um, but yeah, I had, you know, some things, unfortunate things happen, um, some pretty traumatic stuff. And so I wasn't paying attention to my plants. And so a couple were worse for wear. And so I just got rid of them. 
Um, and then two, combining that with that I've mainly stopped buying plants that don't do well in my home, but there are still certain ones that I just really like so much that when I see them, I buy them anyway. Those being like a lot of types of ferns. Um, Cause I just like so much how they look that, you know, when, every time I see them, I end up buying them. The last one was a um, kangaroo paw fern. It lasted for a while, but you know, it got to the point where it was just, it was worse for wear. So rather than, and I'm inspecting the back to make sure it's one that I actually have to take off before I remove it, but uh oh. All right, well, this is now going to be a propagation. See, that what, that's what happens when you don't have shears. So I was trying to take this one off, but this was the main base of it. And so I ended up taking these off too, but one of these I would have taken off anyway because of the damage. Um, so that's fine. I don't have any Monstera propagating right now and it came off perfectly with a node right there. So that's cool. No big deal. I will propagate this one, but that's could probably be an example of why it's better to have shears, but I just don't have any, I don't even have any scissors really. Cause I was looking. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying, as far as the, um, what do you call it? The fern, like, even though I know, unfortunately they don't do the best in my house, even though I do have humidifiers and stuff, I still get them cause I just really like how they look. Maybe next time I'll get one and put it in the, um, what do you call it? Put it in the bathroom. Maybe it'll, it'll do better there. Okay. So keep turning um so yeah i got rid of that one another one was the umbrella tree that's another plant that for me as far as pests go i've had several um umbrella plants and every one that i've had has gotten um scale it's gotten it's gotten scale so it hung in there for a while and i you know treated it and was keeping it but it got to the point where it just was not growing back and so i just decided to um to get rid of it instead of just hanging on to it so this is another piece i don't know i'm thinking about possibly taking this piece off to propagate too because they need the leaves need to come off when they look like this um hmm and see now i can still see some moving so they are still active ones on here unfortunately okay all right let's see what we can do here Cause I haven't seen any moving for a long time, but I just did see some moving. Um, let me make a decision here. So I mean, the leaves are not at that point, like they're not gonna be saved. So I'm calm. It's like, they're just gonna get worse over time and shrivel up like they're doing right now so all right i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna take this piece off and give it a little twist i need to invest in some shears that's what i need to do okay so that piece is off um i'm gonna try to zoom in to that one where i just saw them moving so you can see what they look like uh, of course, I'm probably not gonna be able to get it now. But if you go, if you Google it, you'll be able to see they're like little. They're really small, and you have to like look close and pay attention to catch their movement. Cause sometimes it doesn't like it won't look like they're moving, but they are. Cause like I said, I had been checking, and I didn't see any movement until just now. So after I get all the affected worsely affected leaves off. I'm going to um, 
give it a rinse down in the shower and then I'm gonna spray it again with some neem and then just keep treating it that way. This one right here should really come off, but this new one is like, it's connected to it. So I don't wanna, um, you know, I don't wanna damage the new one to take that one. So that one will stay. Just keep going around. Now this right here is the main stalk. Um, so far what I've taken off has been right here. So far what I've taken off has been like smaller branching off pieces, but this is like the main stalk right here. So maybe once I do this, I'll stake it. Um, Cause I didn't stake it at first. I liked it like growing wild and bushy. So we'll see, but let me keep going around. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you've experienced with your plants this year as far as any pests or how well they've grown and stuff like that. Because overall, I think everything has done pretty well. Um, I've pared down to plants mostly that I know uh, do well in my home. And then also that, honestly, I can kind of neglect a little bit. I'm trying to find one crawling to show you guys, but... I can't find one now. Okay. And this is not to say I won't have to take more off later, but at least for right now, I wanted to give it a good start and get, you know, the worstly affected ones off. Like, here, let me show you this one. Both of these. This is another little branch. Let me get that out of there. Okay. Hold on. So these right here, as you can see, this was damaged like this um, when I bought it. But this is where I'm saying you want to look at the back because if this one wasn't curled, which is another sign. Um, first of all, let's just say there's signs with plants. Mommy, yes. Hold on, please. There are signs with plants that one thing doesn't necessarily automatically mean something else. Where I'm saying like brown spots don't necessarily mean okay that you have a pest. It could be watering. But it's a certain combination, in my experience, of issues that let you know what it is. So since I've had, this is my third Monstera, and they, I've had thrifts each time, I know, like, okay, once I'm getting this curling, and then I'm getting the browning, I know to check the back of the leaves. So if you look at the back of that leaf, and I'll try to zoom it in for you, you see all that brown. And to feel, it's kind of feels sandy. So all that brown right there, that's how you know that you've had the thrips. And again, on that back part is where you would see the little spots and you have to look at them closely and then you'll see them moving and that's how you know. Um, so again, this was just a little branch off and since they're both affected, I just take it off. I'm gonna put that one piece in for propagate, but I don't wanna have like a whole bunch of them really like propagated, I don't think. See, this one has some damage, but I think it still looks okay. Um, and again, after I take off the ones that I think have to absolutely go now, then I'm going to go and rinse it down in the shower and, um, get, uh, some more neem to spray it again. Um, now I do, let me see. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to leave this one cause it's connected to a brand new one. Again, like I said on the other side, so I want to leave it some support. Um, Again, like I said, I sprayed down with neem oil. I also put the, the plant into the shower, which works, but it's best if you have like a handheld shower piece because you have to blast the under part of the leaves and you just turn the shower on and it's, you know, spraying down the tops. They like to, to hang out on the back of the leaves. So you wanna make sure you're spraying the backs of the leaves also. And now that I'm saying it out loud, Instead of putting it in the shower this time, I may put it into my sink because I have a sprayer in the kitchen. So I may just put it in there so that I can make sure I'm getting up and close on the backs of the leaves also. And then I'll put up a mixture. I do a mixture of the neem oil, um, water, and I put a, like a couple of drops of Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. And so I shake that all up and then I just spray it down. I soak it. Um, the leaves front and back, the, all the stems down to the dirt, and then I um, soak some of the water on the dirt too. So I'm surprised there are more crawling. 
because well that just lets you know because i got the, got the feeling that i wanted to do it today and i figured i should film it since i was doing it and lo and behold there you go there's more issues so that's fine um take this one off but yeah i think since i have it down like this and i can see like the main main stalk that i probably will just um i probably will just stake it up yeah because it's more accessible now but what i do have that i use for staking i guess i could do that in another video if you all want it so let me know down below but i keep it basic i don't make like moss poles and everything mainly because i never had the material i didn't have the material to do it and i like to use what i have on hand um and i just like cheap options for my plants so i found this big pack of bamboo stalks at home no at lowe's they're like five foot tall i believe i still have them over in um in the corner if i remember i'll insert a picture and i just take them and i break them they break really easily to get the length that i need and i just stick them around and then um i brace the plant you know similar to this with the stake and i loosely tie um twine which is what i had on hand so that's what i was using um so that's how i'll do it i do want to try the velcro um i think you can get it on amazon and it's supposed to still be very gentle as far as for the plants because sometimes you can use materials to tie the plants to the whatever you're trying to um you know what i'm saying whatever you're trying to sit there and um, post them up with and if you tie it too tight because monsteras have heavy branches like heavy arms as is over time it can pull through and um damage the plant so i try not to do that okay so i think for now although there are some leaves that still have like some browning on the back uh for now i think i'm happy with what i removed as far as um the ones that had the most damage so just give it one last little slip and right here you can see where i was talking about here's a new growth and here's a new growth so it's still actively growing um take a last spin here to see if there are any other ones that i think need to just absolutely go right now I keep looking back at this one. Oh, yeah, I can't take that one off because it has a new one attached to it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this. Um, yeah, it was a little bit annoying that it happened, a little worrisome, but not as much as when it first happened um, because I wanted a Monstera for so long that when I finally got my first one, I had got it from Trader Joe's for like $19, and then I ended up not being able to save that one. It just went too far, and it wasn't growing back, so I tossed it. I got another same similar situation so with this one it had been doing so well for so long that i was really surprised um when it actually happened because it had grown so well and with this one too this was the first time i had so much new growth with all the nice um big fenestrations and everything in there or the slits as you know i like to say but nonetheless it's still doing well so um that's it for this video i'm gonna head into um the kitchen and give it a nice spray down if you have um like a backyard or a hose hookup that's even better because then you can really blast it without worrying about making a mess but i'm going to work with what i have um and blast it that way in the kitchen and then I, like i said i'm going to mix neem oil water and a couple drops of dr brownish peppermint soap and um shake that up really well and i'm just going to soak it down and then um, let that sit I will make one note about the neem oil because this plant um my main window is over this way and so this plant sits right in front of that window um to maximize on the light i will advise that if you are pest doing pest control and spraying down with neem oil and i can do a separate video on um the neem oil too as far as like you know how to use it and how to use it like after you find pests but you can also use it preventatively before you even see any pests but um again just let me know down below i want to get back in the swing of doing videos so just let me know what you want to see but um as i was saying once you have a plant that you're treating with neem oil do not put it back into like direct light or sun right away um let it sit back i would say like the day that you spray it it's okay to let it sit off to the side because what will happen I'm almost done, Mama. What will happen, and I have seen it happen um, to my plants, is that the neem oil 
causes um, when the sun hits that neem oil, it causes burning on the leaves. And so if you um, burn the leaves, then of course you're gonna have more leaves that you're gonna have to remove because once the leaf is burnt and damaged, you know there's nothing you can do. Okay, so it's time for my daughter's snack, as y'all can hear. So let me get off of here. But this is what I did, um, kind of a little before and after. You can see. Let me move over here. In the beginning, when I held it up to myself like this, you know, I really couldn't see through. I had to pull it apart. But this is the difference you can see. Um, and let me just show you what I took off. These are the leaves right here that I removed. And then this I'm going to propagate. I'll probably put this in LECA because I did have one propagation in LECA that did good for a while. And then it just kind of started messing up. So I'll put this one in LECA. Um, and there's one other one that has a node. So I'll look at it and see um, if I can get it completely debugged and then put in Leka. So maybe I'll put both of these into Leka to try to get me another little plant going. All right, well, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next plant video. Bye, guys.